In this era of glaucoma surgeries where MIGs are taking over tubes and traps, we will enter, or rather, not penetrate the world of glaucoma surgeries. We know the site of principal resistance to aqueous outflow lies in at the juxtacanalicular meshwork. Non-penetrating deep sclerectomy or NPDS targets this area. In NPDS, we create two flaps, superficial and deep, remove the deep flap and expose the trabeculo disseminate window, through which controlled aqueous filtration happens to the scleral leg, thereby reducing the IOP. NPDS is mainly indicated in open angles. These are the distinct advantages of NPDS, as there is no entry into the anterior chamber. We will now see the steps of NPDS. As with trabeculectomy, we make a superficial flap, but cut at limbus and with adequate forward dissection. After MMC application, temporal phaco is completed, pupil is constricted and the main wound sutured. We now proceed with deep flap dissection, which is the most critical and difficult part of the surgery. Deep flap should be deep to reach the trabeculo disseminate window. Once we see this, anterior chamber decompression is done. Then deep flap is excised and the trabeculo disseminate window is exposed. The bleeding points indicate that the Schlem's canal is de-roofed. Now comes the moment of truth where we peel the inner wall of the Schlem's canal. Note the excellent filtration Finally, scleral flap and conjunctiva are closed. This slide shows post-op day one images after different glaucoma surgeries. Note how quiet the eye is after NPDS. Post-operatively, one can image this window by UBM and Gonio as shown here. NPDS has a steep learning curve don't worry, we will guide you through the management of common complications. This clip shows the difficulty faced due to a thick superficial flap. One has to avoid this. Here the deep flap dissection is not deep enough making it difficult to reach the trabeculo decimate window. Here, a wet sponge is used to enhance filtration.
If flap dissection is improper, a third flap can be raised to gain better exposure. This slide summarizes the common flap complications and their management. Next complication is microperforation of the window. One has to take extreme care and caution, as this can happen with different steps. Microperforation does not portend bad prognosis. If managed appropriately, good outcomes are achievable. A suspected perforation is seen here. The shallowing of interior chamber confirms the same. Here we see a macro perforation with iris prolapse. Once this happens, NPDS has to be converted to trabeculectomy and surgical PI should be done. Alternative strategy will be to close the deep flap, make a new ostium, and proceed with trab normally. Ensure no leak at the end of the surgery. This is the same patient during one of the follow-up visits. Note the new ostium in a well-formed anterior chamber. This slide summarizes the micro and macro perforation management strategies. What to do if the IOP is high following NPDS? This patient with pigmentary glaucoma developed a steroid response following deep sclerectomy. Though the trabeculo disseminant window was intact and bleb was diffuse, IOP remained refractory even after tapering steroids. We performed laser goniopuncture one month later. LGP aims to convert NPDS to a controlled trabeculectomy. Post-procedure, patient did well with good control of the IOP. Timing of LGP is slightly controversial with variable reports in the literature. We delay the LGP by at least a month to maintain the balance between IOP and complications. Note, for LGP to work, the deep flap dissection should be proper. LGP should be considered as part of the NPDS and not as a failure or re-intervention. NPDS, by its controlled filtration, aims to reduce the hypotony-related complications of TRAB. With the addition of MMC, the success is comparable to TRAB, though slightly less. But the give and take between success and complications does matter. We hope this video guide improves our understanding of deep sclerectomy and encourage many surgeons to learn this elegant surgery.